good afternoon and well, welcome once again in the second session of fdp now i request to uh, miss vv power ma'am to introduce first resource person of second session dr sr patil sir over to you ma'am okay. uh, thank you ma'am good afternoon everyone it's my pleasure to introduce to guest dr sr patil sir assistant professor from spdm arts spb and shd commerce and sma science college shirpur he completed his bsc in year 2018 and msc in 2010 currently he is, uh, is working in various field like research areas of interest color chemistry functional organic materials sensor green chemistry sono chemistry computational chemistry his research publication international 13 review article 1 and two books are published total 16 he is awarded by academic and research honor to receive the bharat vikas award 2018 for the contribution and outstanding performance in the field of color chemistry and influent water treatment by institute of cell lines isr bhuvneshwar odisha he is awarded a uh, set uh, so net get a uh, second rank prize in international ozone day quiz competition organized by maharashtra pollution control board institute of chemical technology and work from for crystallization filtration and drying in 2011 Maharashtra State Government Eklave Scholarship in Post Graduation Level 2009-10. Uh, Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar Award First Rank in MSc Organic Chemistry in 2009-10. Kaka Saheb Barve Award First Rank in FIBSc 2005 and TYBSc 2007. Ideal Student Award 2006-7 in SPDM Arts College Shirpur. His extracurricular activity, uh, like winner in inter-class cricket tournament 2019, organized by Uka Prasadia University 2019 and 2018. Bright performance and runner-up in Kabaddi Uvam 2015, organized by Institute of Chemical Technology Mumbai in 2015. Man of the series and first prize winner in home tennis ball cricket sports saga 2014 organized by Institute of Chemical Technology Mumbai in 2014 thank you thank you ma'am now i kindly request to dr sr patil sir to continue our event by sharing some words with us okay Am I audible, ma'am? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Then shall I share my screen? Yes, sir. my screen is visible to all yes sir okay <clears throat> hello everyone good afternoon to all thank you so much uh, uh, miss pawar ma'am uh, for the nice introduction i am very grateful for inviting me for a lecture in faculty development program on syllabus of diploma advanced diploma and skill courses for second year i think right so here we discuss about the dye stuff which itself a landmark discovery so let us take closer look about the colorful life with dye stuff synthesis of dyes and its high tech applications right okay so this is our outline uh, that is during my presentation you will be find journey of colorful life that is color and dyes dyes and pigment landmark discovery of natural and synthetic dyes then classification of dyes based on 
uh, chemical constitution synthesis of some selected dyes uh, then health and environmental hazards of the dyes synthetic dyes specifically and their remediation process at some high tech application of the dyes right as we know that what will happen if there is no color in our life can you imagine it okay actually uh, the world without color would have no variety everything always being a shade of black or white without the distinction of the color in the world variety would never be possible so uh, so creativity should have some limit so everything and everyone would be the same if there is no color in our life so colorful life or dye stuff is one of the uh, most important part in our life right so as we know that dye stuff are nothing but what uh, it is uh, really associated with the color and color plays a most significant role in everyone's life right color is one of the element of the nature that made the human being uh, that uh, made the human living more artistic right so they are supposed to be associated with emotions color is associated with our emotions our human qualities season festivals and also passion for our life right so love for color is a natural instinct every individual has his own choice and liking the color right and as we know that color can be produced or it is a, it is an effect produced by the eye by its nerves with the help of light waves of different wavelength of frequency right so there is a some basic relationship between the color and dye right so dye stuffs basically dye stuffs are nothing but what dye stuffs are nothing but what it is the dyes and pigments right and generally dyes compounds are colored compounds but not necessarily all color colored compounds are dyes so dyes is a substance or dye stuff is a substance it can be obtained from the nature or it can be synthesized in the laboratory okay so dyes can be substance used to impart the color to the textile paper leather paper leather or other materials other fabrics right and its color should not be changed by washing by heating by lighting right so dyes somewhat different from the pigment right there is very basic thin line between the dyes and pigments right uh, pigments are basically a finely ground solid dispersed in uh, dispersed solids or we can say that finely powder and it can be dispersed in the solution or it can be dispersed in the uh, medium either in water or uh, in other mediums and it can be used pigments are used uh, for the paints and ink or blended with other materials so most dyes compounds are organic compounds they contains the carbon uh, carbon containing moiety and most of the uh, pigments are it uh, either inorganic or it will be the organic right pigments generally more brighter than the dyes just to okay sorry all right so generally so dyes are colored it may be colored organic compounds so dye must have color compounds but not necessary all color compounds are dyes for example azo benzene you know that azo benzene it is a yellow colored solid but it is not a dye because it is not fixed to the fixed to the fabrics or fixed to the substrate but uh, dyes must have some dyes must dyes should be the stick with that fabric so dyes are colored organic or inorganic compounds substance mixtures and which when applied to the substrate it imparts the color to the substrate right okay? so all dyes are colored compounds but it is not necessary to all color compounds are the dyes right and and this gave birth to new science color from the natural right and as we know that the blue color the blue color it is an integral part of the india it is the color of the wheel on the indian tag also right so it is also the color of indian men and women cricket team you can find out indian men and women cricket team having a soft color a blue color compound because this color uh, is given by uh, india right and the uses of blue dye we are using uh, trace back to the 2000 bc and before india had the mastery to extract the indigo dye and indigo is the first natural dye 
and indigo can be obtained from the neelam uh, neelam plants and it has the various shades various blue shades uh, light blue to the blackish blue right and this plant indigo can be obtained from this plant that is the neelam uh, neelam plant uh, we can say neeli in hindi neeli chetu in telugu and avru chidi in tamil right and it has blue solids and this is the structure of indigo and it uh, actually this dye came from the wet dyes it is a classification of dyes based on their application so it is a wet dye actually but it is natural dye it is the first natural dye and we know that the blue dye is transported exporting different parts of the world just like china mongolia arab us japan france etc from an india or the century of the color blue in the dye widely known as indigo and it's simply because india rules the trade of blue dyes across the world so indigo is one of the oldest dye used for coloring fabrics by the india so right so that is why this dye also called as indigo there are other natural sources uh, we know that are uh, turmeric Now people are very uh, so curious about for finding the a uh, natural color a natural dye stuff from the natural resources so turmeric contains yellow colored curcumin this is the uh, curcumin dye mm. actually for the dye molecules should should have oxochromes and molecules should have chromophores right and it is should be the extended conjugation there is extended conjugation so must only this carbon has sp3 carbon but it is inolizable carbon okay so there is a extended conjugation due to this turmeric having the yellow color again we have hina we are using hina or uh, are simply called as mehndi and it contains 2 hydroxy 14 naphthenone and this is the molecule which is responsible to impart the color to the substrate to impart the color to the to our skin right uh just again car carrots having beta carotene this is the extended conjugation dye stuff molecule is present again tomato you know that tomato having be uh, lycopenes extended conjugation due to this tomato having red color carrot having orange color due to this moiety right then strawberry strawberry having the anthocyanin molecules it is the classification based on the application strawberry having the again dye molecules so these are the food dyes then beetroot beetroot having betanins and at the same times at the same times uh, we have the uh, natural colors but we must uh, and then again there is a one landmark discovery of the synthetic dye by the william henry perkin it is uh, almost 160 years ago uh, in 1856 teen teenager william henry perkin accidentally discovered the first successful man made dye actually uh, this sir william henry perkin uh, studied under the professor of august william from the germany uh, at london's prestigious royal college of chemistry and and the professor august uh, research interest was in coal tar it was the easter holidays perkin was given challenge by the given challenge by the august william hoffman and to synthesize the natural alkaloids to synthesize the this kind of natural alkaloids which is uh, anti malarial drug but but in one atom perkin oxidized the aniline using dichromate whose toluidine impurity is reacted with aniline instead of getting colorless quinine it this created a perfectly black solid and he thought that he failed in reaction synthesis cleaning the flask with the alcohol and perkin noticed that there is a purple portion of the solution and after some purification some drying washing with alcohol perkin had a dye and it is a purple dye and this is called as mauve because uh, in england there is a one flower and flower having uh, this flower called as mauve and this is the first synthetic dye accidentally discovered and which has a purple color right so this is this is the accidental discovery of the synthetic dye so our topic today we are going to discuss about the chromophore uh, classification of dyes based on the chemical constitution actually dyes can be classified in a two ways either in a based on the application based on their application and based on their constitution right, right. so chromophore based classification to understand the properties and synthesis method of these dyes so in that you can nitrodyes nitrosodyes diphenyl methane triphenyl methane xanthine thiolene halocyanin heterocyclic carbazole 
anthraquinone and azodyze azodyze one of the most important dyes in the dye stuff industry right and actually what happen when dyes there is one or two notable exception there all kinds of dyes are based on either which is either it is based on the application or based on the constitution these all kinds of dyes were discovered in the 19th century only one or two there is uh, exceptions right and almost one ton of dye is sufficient to color the 42000 suits because of the more demanding of the dye stuff the people's people wanted a dye must be the good right so there is some requirement of a good dye it must dye must having the suitable and attractive color it must have suitable attractive color that is it should absorb the light in the visible view and then dye uh, dye will be the attractive that it it means what it means what dye must contain extended conjugation chromophore amzochrome as well right again the second important requirement for the good dye is the dye must be able to fix to the fabrics fabrics may be anything it may be textile or it may be non textile so it must be able to fix with uh, fabrics or it must have the capability to being fixed to the fabrics by either physical or by either chemical bonding and one more thing dye must not be affected by the water or dilute acids or alkali and and it must have good fastness property fastness properties it must uh, it must have the fastness towards the light good fastness property towards the lights it must have uh, fastness towards the temperature resistance to the action of water dilute acids alkalis or various organic solvents or uh, sometimes in a soap solution also right and fastness properties are nothing but what it is a fixed dye must have better fastness property right so nitro classification based on the constitution so if if any dye contains nitro functionality in their molecule or nitro so functionality in their molecule then we can say that nitro or nitro so dyes respectively right and this nitro or nitro so it will act as a chromophore here chromophore or sometimes it will be the oxochrome right so for the dyes these are the things uh, very essential oxochromes chromophore and extended conjugation right so look at this generally nitro or nitro so dyes are uh, yellow in color so picric acid again it is a dye then gambin y gambin r look at this there is a nitro so nitro so group present in the molecule or nitro group present in the molecule right so these are the or we can say that marshes yellow manchester yellow these are the nitro or nitro so derivative because it contains nitro functionality or nitro so functionality and nitro and nitro so dye can be synthesized with the help of one naphthol look at this one naphthol is sulfonated by using concentrated sulfuric acid or sometimes it uh, it will take oleum then sulfonation takes place and after the nitration then you get nitro compounds uh, actually and this nitro or nitro soda is generally used to dye silk and wool but it is very figurative it is very temporary it is very temporary it does not stand treatment with acids alkali and solvents and also this nitro and nitro so dyes can be used as a staining agent in the microbiology then second class that is diphenyl methane dye diphenyl in this in this kind of dyes it contains two phenyl rings it contains two phenyl rings diphenyl methane two phenyl groups attached to the methane methane molecule or methane group right for example oramon o was discovered in 1883 and it is simply prepared by heating a uh, tetramethyl diamino diphenyl methane with sulfur ammonium chloride sodium chloride in presence of ammonia by heating uh, nearly 180 to 200 degrees celsius and then it results the oramon o and that is after the hydro uh, when it treat with the scl it follow it gives the yellow colored or amino o and it is very basic that and it can be used again for the dyeing silk wool jute paper and leather 
same thing with triphenyl methane dyes and in this kind of dyes it has three phenyl groups attached to the methane and uh, attached to the methanes look at this there is a three phenyl groups present in that molecule so we can say that this is the kind of triphenyl methane dyes and one of the a better example is malachite green and it was discovered discovered in 1877 by the fisher fisher was the scientist by simply condensing the dimethyl aniline dimethyl aniline with benzaldehyde and with dehydrating agent sulfuric acid nearly about 100 degrees celsius and followed by oxidation and uh, treatment with the scl then it produces the malachite green green color dye and this is the malachite green and it is also used to dye the silk and wool also also it is used in staining agent in microbiology or it is also used as an antiseptic agent then again one of the uh, roja aniline is the one of the dye and it is from the triphenyl methane category it has also triphenyl methane group because it is simple single one carbon carbon atom is there and there is triphenyl group and there is a extended conjugation and it was discovered by the veruen in 1859 it is also called as roja aniline is also called as magneta and fuchsin right it is prepared by the oxidizing uh, it is prepared by the oxidizing and equimolar mixture of aniline orthomethyl aniline paramethyl aniline in nitrobenzene in presence of iron filings it is also used to dye wool and silk directly and cotton after treatment with tannin as a mordant and it produces violet and red color then again crystal violet it is from the triphenyl methane dye and it was first prepared by the kern in 1883 by heating the mistler ketones by heating the mistler ketones and this mistler ketones can be obtained from the nn dimethyl aniline with cocl2 and then again mistler ketones is reacted with cocl2 and it produces the crystal violet and this is the tri triphenyl methane dyes because it contains a triphenyl groups to the methane ring right again it has it can be uh, used to dye wool and silk directly again it has staining capability uh, capacity staining agent it acts as a staining agent antiseptic anti fungal agent even right and the most important and the next is thallin dyes this is one of the most important we are using in our daily life also in our laboratory also that is phenolphthalein indicator right so and everyone knows about the uh, phenolphthalein and it is from the thallin category because it can be obtained from the thallic anhydride so phenolphthalein can be obtained with the help of when phenol is reacted with thallic anhydride at higher temperature nearly about uh, 200 degrees celsius by using dehydrating reagent and generally people are using concentrated sulfuric acid for the dehydrating agent and then phenolphthalein can be obtained and actually phenolphthalein is a color solid right when we uh, make the solution uh, for the phenolphthalein then it is colorless solution in acidic and neutral condition specifically but in in alkaline condition it turns a colorless turns to the pink because as we know that in uh, alkaline condition this, this is the acidic proton in alkaline condition uh, this proton can be eliminated and o negative is obtained and this negative charge can be delocalized over the molecules and here a bond can be broken this this bond can be break right and so extended conjugation of occur and due to the extended conjugation due to the extended conjugation it shows the pink color right so it is very uh, one of the useful dye and it is from the thallin category because it is obtained from the thallic acid a thallic anhydride or thallic acid right again one of the next thallin dye is fluorosin so instead of phenol if you take the resorcinol that is 13 dihydroxy phenol uh, then if you take the resorcinol with the help of thallic anhydride is reacted the uh, by using dehydrating agent at higher temperature again fluorosin can be obtained and same scenario is there and this fluorosin gives an yellow green fluorescence in dilute alkaline solution and it can be used for the used to dye for wool and silk also again it, uh, its most important application 
in to trace the detecting water leakage in pipeline. So fluorescent can be used for the as a tracer. Again, it is used in a microscopy, uh, in microbiology, and also it is used as a antiseptic. Means, and then jantin dyes. Look at this. This is the slight difference between the thallin dyes and jantin dyes, right? So thallin dyes can be obtained from the thallic acids, right? Thallic acids and jantin. In the jantin dyes, it has the same moiety. Look at this. It has the same moiety. If we close this uh, ring, CO minus this, so it is a. It look like this. It look like fluorescent, but it is different story because this. A eosin is obtained from the jantin derivative, so eosin dye is related to the thallin dyes, actually, but its parent substance of the dyes are jantin, right? Right. Actually, this eosin is related to thallin dyes, but its parent substance of these dyes are jantin because jantins are dibenzo one four pyrene. This is the jantin moiety. This is the jantin moiety. So fluorescein. Uh, earlier we described about the fluorescein is a type of jantin dye. Right, but uh, sorry, fluorescein is the fluorescein is the thallin dye. But here eosin is the jantin dye because this eosin is obtained from the fluorescein, and this fluorescein is the thallin dye, and this eosin is the jantin dye. Right, and it is also used as a photosensitizer in organic synthesis. So jantin, again, the next example is rhodamine B. It is also one of the most important rhodamine B. It is also the jantin dye. Right, and it is simply condensing thallic anhydride with the metahydroxy amine in presence of dehydrating agent like ZnCl2 or concentrated sulfuric acid at higher temperature. Then it forms the rhodamine. Here, amino amino functionality is there, and due to the amino amino is the, right now this functionality is the oxochrome. This functionality is the oxochrome. So ring can be open here. Right. So rhodamine B. It is a red color solution. The most important dye that is azote dye. As we know that azote functionality or azote dye can be obtained in the dyes as well as in the pigments. Right? So azote dyes and pigments are the largest group of all the dyes, and it is used for it is used for all kinds of fibers. So this dye contains Azo functionality, and azo functionality is nitrogen nitrogen double bond, and it is the one of the largest largest group present in the dye stuff. Almost all kinds of dyes covered by the azo dyes, right? So if there is a one azo group present in the molecule, then we can say that it is the mono azo dye. If there is two azo groups present in the molecule, then we can say that it is B azotized or di azotized. If there is three, then it is tri. If it is four, then it is tetra. And if it is more than four azo groups present in that moiety, then we can say that it is a poly azotized. And almost, almost the full range of shares, full range of shares have been present in that uh, azo molecules like yellow, red, orange, navy blue, violet, black, etc. Right, so azo can be prepared. Azo dyes can be prepared by two methods. For that, for the preparation of the azo dyes, it requires two processes. First is dihydrogenation followed by the coupling. And we must make sure that there should be the lower temperature and acidic condition when we prepare the dihydrogenation salt. And when we do the coupling reaction, then it is depending on the your nature of the coupler, right? And this uh, theory. Uh, this process was discovered by the Peter Gris in 1862. So, diazonium salt of aromatic amines, specifically what aromatic amines, right? Aliphatic amines are also useful for the diazonization, but for the dyes molecule, we need the conjugation. So, aliphatic amines are are not used for the dyes preparation. So, if you want to prepare the azo dyes, then you must use you must take the aromatic amines and specifically the primary aromatic amines, right? So, in the first step, diazonization of aromatic amine by treatment with nitrous acid, and followed by coupling the diazonium salt with the phenol, or it will be the enolizable ketones, or it will be the aromatic amines. 
or the preparation of azo compounds and the amine which is diazotized is called diazo component and while other compound component which which, uh, which it couple is called as coupling component right so look at this this is the azo dye preparation the first step diazotization if you take the aniline that is you must take aromatic amine and it should be the primary primary amine first degree amine second degree and third degree uh, do not form the diazonium salt right so this is the most important condition for the diazotization so first degree amine is reacted with acid then it forms the salt and then nana2 and scl it produces nitrous acid and uh, aniline and nitrous acid react here then uh, finally it produces the diazonium salt and then this diazonium salt is very uh, stable at lower temperature nearly about 0 to 5 degrees celsius then make sure that whenever you you want to prepare the azo dyes then the temperature should be low it should be at least 0 to 5 degrees celsius not more than uh, 5 degrees celsius if it is more than 5 degree then your diazonium salt is unstable the n2 can be liberated easily and you can get the phenol right because your diazonium salt is very reactive species it can be reactive with your water right again most important condition is that when you prepare this diazonium salt then you should maintain the acidic condition when diazonium salt is uh, while diazonium salt preparation right it should be maintained the acidic condition if suppose there is slightly alkaline condition then diazonium salt can be decomposed means n2 can be liberated and you can get the again phenol product right so if you want to uh, prepare the azotite then first step is most important that is diazotization so diazonium salt for the preparation of the diazonium salt then it requires primary uh, amine then lower temperature and acidic condition and then this diazonium salt can be stabilized through the regenerating structures look at this then this diazonium salt can be stabilized through the regenerating structures and if suppose there is excess of nitrous acid available in your uh, in your diazonium salt preparation then excess of nitrous acid at the end of diazotization process it may be destroyed either by using either by urea or by sulfamic acid right it can be nitrous acid can can be destroyed with the help of urea or with the help of sulfamic acid and it can be tested by the star iodide papers right okay and the second component that is coupling component again it is a uh, diazotization for the diazotization it requires lower temperature it requires acidic condition it requires primary aromatic amine but for the coupling it may be phenol or it may be amines specifically aromatic amines or it may be enolizable ketone or it may be conjugated molecules we can say that a conjugated generally conjugated molecules having more electron density because it uh, it has the sp2 hybridization okay so if you take the phenol like coupler then you must use the alkaline condition right so look at this if you take the phenol as a coupler in alkaline condition in phenoxide ion can be obtained the negative electron density occupies at the para position that is depending on your uh, nature of the phenol then at para position generally ortho and para position and uh, then and after that it can be attack on the electrophilic diazonium salt and it produces nitrogen nitrogen double bond but if you take aniline then you must use it slightly acidic condition right slightly acidic condition and we, why we need slightly acidic condition if you take the alkaline condition you know that your aniline or your amines are generally basic in nature and if there is base directly uh, attached with the diazonium salt then uh, this diazonium salt can be decomposed so we need to maintain we, we must ensure that there should be the there should be the diazonium cation should be present and their unprotonated aromatic amine concentration should be there while coupling reaction with the amines so it is very uh, slightly difficult means not difficult but it has it we must take care for the uh, coupling when we do the amines reaction okay. so look at this if you want to prepare the azo dyes that is orange one and two look at the sulfalic uh, sulfenylic acid undergoes the diazotization in presence of nana2 and scl acidic condition at a lower temperature almost 0 to 5 degrees celsius diazonium salt can be obtained and if you uh, or if you want to prepare the orange one then you need to take alpha naphthol 
and you know that alpha and epsilon there is two possibilities alpha and para but para position is more favorable it gives a major yield and coupling can be takes place in presence of in alkaline condition under the alkaline condition so orange one can be obtained or the orange two if you want to prefer the orange two then you must take beta and epsilon there is a beta and epsilon and here this position is more powerful or uh, there is a more electron density situated at this position so diazonium salt can uh, diazonium uh, sorry azo compounds can be obtained and this is there is only one azo group present in the molecule so it is what it is your single mono azo dye this is your mono azo dye right if you want to prepare orange three and orange four okay your starting material is same your aromatic amine is same only the difference is that your coupler here for the orange and orange for you are taken nn dimethyl aniline and nn phenyl amine and if you take the amines then it must have slightly acidic ph slightly acidic ph and as we know that orange tree it is also called as methyl orange and we are using methyl orange as a acid base acid base indicator right for the acid base titration okay then congo road and this congo road firstly synthesize by the paul botiger in 1883 right and congo red is synthesized by coupling this diazotized benzidine this benzidine benzidine initially a uh, tetraazotized and then it is coupled with your naphthionic acid naphthionic acid in presence of sodium chloride and then it produces congo red right. again aerochrome black tea this is also azotized it is the complexometric indicator we know that uh, we are using uh, as a indicator in a complex uh, react titration complexometric titration so erichrome black tea is useful for the water uh, determination of the water hardness process right it form the colored complex during the titration so it can be used as a indicator so it is prepared by diazotizing four amino seven nitrate three naphthol one sulfonic in presence of small amount of copper sulfur right and it is mainly used in a edta titration cell okay then direct black ew look at this this benzidine this is the benzidine benzidine molecule having uh, there is a many developed country ban on that benzidine but people are using for the uh, preparation of the direct black ew so benzidine is reacted there is two nh2 group benzidine is reacted with two moles of sodium nitrate and hcl at lower temperature then it forms tetraazonium salt of benzene then it is reacted with 13 dimethyl 13 uh, uh, sorry 3 amino aniline you can use or meta aniline you can use meta dianiline and then it forms the diazonium salt you can form the diazonium salt and one diazonium salt is already available and in second step it can be it can be coupled with the h acid and h acid is one of the most important intermediate in the dye stuff industry so many dyes occurs from the h acid because this h acid is useful for the diazotization because there is a nh2 group right and this h acid also used as a coupler because there is oh group if it is oh if you want to couple at this position then you must use the alkaline condition if you want to use this h acid as a coupler and as a coupler in acidic condition then couple can be takes place at this position and again this nh2 is also free for the diazotization so many dye stuff are obtained from the h acid h acid and its derivative right so it produces compound b it produces compound b then in second step in second step this aniline sodium nitrate hcl form the diazonium salt of aniline then combine with the compound b and the diazonium salt of aniline then it produces direct black ew look at this so your h acid can be coupled at this position if you couple at this position then you must take the alkaline ph and if you want to couple at this position then you have to use slightly acidic ph right so this is the story of direct ew and again it is one of the most important dye in the dye stuff industry then fast and look at this in this uh, direct black ew there is nitrogen azo group one azo group then this is two and this is three 
So it is what three azoides. It is what there is three azo groups present in the molecule. So it is the three azoides. Then same story with the fast sulfon black acid. If you take the H acid and H acid undergoes the diazotization, then this NH2 can be diazotized easily. Azonium salt is obtained. Then it is coupled with the butane salt, slightly alkaline pH. Then it forms the compound A. In step two, naphthenic acid again diazotized, and your compound A and your this diazonium salt of the naphthenic acid is coupled then slightly uh, in a slightly alkaline pH, and then you got a fast sulfon black acid. Right. So again here two azo groups. So it is B azotized. It is B azotized. So the next category is anthroquinone dyes. So most important, there should be the there should be the anthroquinone functionality. So this is the anthroquinone functionality. If in your molecule, if in your molecule or if in your dye stuff, the anthro functionality anthroquinone functionality is there, then you can say that it is the anthro anthroquinone dye, right? And the most important dye from this category is alizarin. Right? This is the alizarin. Right? This is the alizarin, and it can be obtained. it can be obtained by simply anthroquinone can be sulfonated with the help of oleum at higher temperature with fusion it forms the silver salt and then it react with naoh and naocl for, followed by the acidification it produces the alizarin and alizarin is the modern dye means modern forms an insoluble coordination compound between the fabric and the dye and it binds binds the two that is alizarin is a classical modern dye so this uh, oh groups can be sorry this oh group and this uh, carbonyl group in it means tunon moiety it can be complex or it can be combined with any metals just like calcium aluminum iron etc and this alizarin also used for the also used in a Uh, used to dye the uh, silk and wool, or even leather also. In leather, you, you are we are using uh, cherries means shoe polish. So alizarin can be used as a shoe polish in a shoe polish. Even alizarin also used for the dyeing the uh, leather ball in cricket ball. So it can be used for the for that purpose. Okay, uh, it has a different differences. When this uh, moiety. This alizarin moiety, when it modern with the aluminium, then it shows a rose red color. When this alizarin moiety is combined with the barium, barium metal, then it shows a blue color. If it is iron, then it should it shows a violet color. So it is very interesting. If it is a uh, modern or bind with the chromium, then it shows a brownish red color. So it is very interesting and important dye. Anthroquinone is or one of the most important dye again, right? Then. indanthone blue dye it is the category of wet dyes and it is uh, uh, depends on the method by which they are obtained wet dyes are nothing but what it is the uh, it is the method by which they are applied so again indigo is also wet dye and indanthone blue dye is also the wet wet dye again carbazol dyes so look at this in carbazol this is the carbazol moiety if this kind of moiety present in the molecule present in the dye stuff molecule and we can say that these are the carbazol category dyes categorized dyes right so carbazol is the name given to an aromatic heterocyclic compound this is the aromatic tricyclic compound so here benzene ring right because it keeps conjugation okay so it is the aromatic heterocyclic tricyclic organic compound it consists of two six member benzene rings fused on either side of five member nitrogen containing ring okay so this is the typical example of the carbazol look at this if you take the di anthramide intermediate and if you condense this moiety with the help of concentrated sulfuric acid then it is the carbazol kind of derivative and next one is heterocyclic dyes in heterocyclic dyes it means it contains at least one heterocyclic ring dye stuff must contains at least one heterocyclic ring in their structure So heterocyclic compounds contain at least one atom other than carbon in their ring structure. So uh, it may be nitro. Uh, usually in heterocyclic uh, rings, 
in heterocyclic structure it may have nitrogen sulfur or oxygen so heterocyclic dyes are acridines pinines and azine type of dyes right so it can be achieved with the help of this reaction so this acetylation of this 2-8 diamino acridine followed by the hydrolysis it forms the acriflavin and it is the kind of heterocyclic dye again this methylene blue is one of the most important dye actually in the 19th century methylene blue used only as a dye but in a 21st century as we seen that it is a drug who has many antiviral properties also it has a redox uh, it has the ability to redox reagent it is also used for the Hello. Am I audible? No. Hi, yes, sir. Hi, yes, sir. Okay. Please continue. Okay. Okay. So methylene blue was uh, methylene blue dye was first formulated in 1876 by Henry Spiro, right? And this was a landmark formulation. Methylene blue has seen called the first fully synthetic drug. and it can be used in a medicine in uh, 19th century it acts as a dye but in 21st century it is also used as a drug and uh, it is also uh, first time it is used as a treatment of malaria and you know that in 21st century it will be the very helpful for the life giving medicine for the covid 19 also and the who also declared that methylene blue is the list in a, in the list of essential medicine right and it is widely regarded as a list of the world's safest and most effective medicine so methylene blue is synthesized commercialized by oxidation of nn dimethyl aniline followed by and then this is the methylene drugs so again pigments pigments we, as we know that as we earlier discussed pigments are nothing but dye stuff but it is very it is insoluble in water or insoluble in other solvents also right and it is very fine powder so it has the discrete particles which are insoluble in the medium right so pigments can be white or can be color so there is zinc oxide titanium oxide black carbon black these are also pigments then it is called as white pigments and it is also colored pigments right so there are two types of pigments lakes and toners so again uh, acid lakes basic lake so lakes are soluble organic dyes and it can be considered as ionic pigments toners are non ionic pigments these are the hansa yellow gs are the from the toners and lakes are the pigmented cpp serum okay okay again as we know that dyes are most important dyes plays the most important role in our life but at the same times it has the synthetic dyes having some health issues and environmental issues also right one of the major concern of the dye industry is the pollution caused due to the manufacture of the dye synthesis of the dye dye intermediates dyes or during the process of the dye because uh, many dyes can be degraded when we apply to the substrate right during the generally most of the time uh, during the coloration process during the dyeing process a large percentage of the dye does not bind to the fabric and it is lost to the wastewater stream so approximately 10 to 15% dyes are released into the environment during the dyeing process making the effluent is highly colored right so if and in case of textile dyeing operation incomplete dye bath exhaustion and presence of metal ions can harm the aquatic life so in leather industries also uh, they are using many inorganic chemicals like h2so4 along with your acids along with your dye stuffs sodium sulfate calcium carbonate uh, etc which do not only pollute but but 
cause the serious a uh, severe disease right so we must so it is very urgent need to remediation of the pollution caused by the dye right so uh, there is effluent treatment plant is mandatory for all the industry and it this helps to remove the various pollutants after the treatment the treated industrial waste water can be recycled or released into the environment thus uh, effluent treatment plants are set up as per the guidelines of the government to safeguard the environment and also the reduce the use of potable water also so we need to put process industrial effluents and it can be achieved by physical methods or chemical methods or biological methods all right so these are the high tech application of the dyes so dyes uh, dye stuffs it means dyes and pigments are not only useful in the textile but it can be used as a non textile application in just like medicines cosmetics pharmaceuticals uh, agriculture high tech application also it has uh, plastics decolorizing food dye sensitized solar cell ph indicator acid uh, then tracer okay so look at this again it can be used for the uh, to dye the leather uh, red cricket ball this is the pink uh, recently we are uh, people are using pink colored ball cricket ball right so it has the high tech application again you know that led lcd this is the from the dye stuff right so these are the application of the dyes these are the application of the dyes so the last point is the dye stuff market and so today the dye stuff industry is one of the most important chemical industry in the india and the synthetic organic dye stuff again it is one of the most important so earlier europe america and germany were leading the manufacturing of the dye stuffs in the global market but recently india has also uh, one of the most uh, important country to export the uh, dye stuffs uh, to the others the first dye stuff industry set up in india was associated research uh, uh, arl labs you know that early lab limited it is also called as early lab limited associate research laboratory and it was established in 1941 near pune right and this was followed the atul products amar dye then indian dye stuff industry a number of companies with foreign collaboration also made their presence felt some of the prominent ones uh, color came sandoz india like this company uh, industries are uh, present in the india so indian in dye stuff industry plays a vital role in the economic development of the country it is one of the most core chemical industry in india we can say that it is also the second highest export segment in the chemical industry and the most important thing most important thing maharashtra and gujarat account for 90% dye stuffs production in india and because uh, in maharashtra and gujarat there is the availability of the raw material and the dominance of the textile industry in this region So 90% dye stuff industry are situated in the in the region of Maharashtra and Gujarat only. So now the major countries in India exported the products to included US, Turkey, Bangladesh, China, and Germany. Again, Bangladesh also the emerging country to produce the dye stuffs, specifically textile dye stuffs. Right, right. So, so this uh, this. in conclusion remarks so this accident caused a new synthetic dye industry that changed the course of textile and dye stuff industry so these are the ones used to color everything in our world so today we are using dye stuff uh, for the to dye the fields to uh, close also right so just imagine if that this accidental discovery didn't happen by the young scientists over the 160 years ago then what would happen it would be the colorless around our life so that is why the synthetic dyes are so important so important for welfare and colorful life of human kind so i could say that the accidental found first synthetic dye was the landmark innovation in color chemistry color chemistry right so i would like to acknowledge the online platform due to this this online lecture is possible i also thank you I also thank, thank you very you. much sir
okay i also thankful to dr ganesh kokade sir for his coordination uh, also thankful to principal of ycis head department head department of chemistry of ycis and all my fellow teachers for your patience once again i am very grateful ycis satara thank you thank you all thank you very much sir for your valu valuable guidance now i request to uh, miss pallavi power ma'am to express our top thanks thank you ma'am good afternoon to all it gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this section my heart fills with lot of gratitude and respect for our distinguished speaker dr s r patil sir for not only sharing your valuable time with your commendable talk on the subject synthesis and processing of dye thank you for clearing our concepts and enhancing our understanding i would like to thank principal vich sadu sir viewers chairman vv saman ma'am head of department mr pv bisa sir and organizing committee i would also like to thanks teaching faculty for attending and taking part in the ftp thank you once again जरा सर्वानी तुम्हे कैमरे है ऑन करा थैंक यू मैम नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट टू मिस्टर पी एम गायकवाड़ सर टू इंट्रोड्यूस अवर नेक्स्ट रिसोर्स पर्सन थैंक यू मैडम आई एम इमेंस टू इंट्रोड्यूस अवर थर्ड सेशन चीफ गेस्ट मिस्टर अशोक रावलेकर सर सीनियर मैनेजर फ्रॉम सन फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्रीज लिमिटेड मुंबई सर हैज अ 20 years of uh, industrial experiments in the various department sir has completed msc in organic chemistry from shivaji university kolhapur and from same university he completed the bachelor degree in chemistry he attended a number of workshop organized by shipla and pune university combinedly okay thank you over to you sir okay now i request to rahul ek sir to uh, to share his views with us yeah thank you uh, i hope i am audible yes, yes sir yes yes sir yeah okay thank you so first of all thank you for the yc college satara giving me an opportunity to talk on the expectation of the pharmaceutical industry over the physical chemical properties of the substances basically uh, physical chemical properties of any substance is a unique in the universe so whenever we talk on any physical chemical properties of any substance it has a immense role in the pharma industry to develop a good drug good drug product which is used for the human uh, life saving drug and all pharmaceutical industries are whatever prepares the drug for the patients these are being carefully prepared these are being tested by various sophisticated instruments and uh, then deliver to the patient so safety efficacy quality everything is taken care before any drug to be uh, delivered to the patient but the most important part here is it, it's very difficult to prepare and launch any drug in the market because it has a two parts in the pharma industry one is a active drug substance and second part is a drug product 
in the form of tablets, capsules, injections, then gels, nasal sprays. There are various instruments being used and various techniques being used to deliver the drug to the patient based on their activity and mode of action to the patient. So in my overall session, I, I have just uh, five or six slides uh, to talk on the physical properties. But majority the focus, what I want to convey, whenever as a teacher, as a professor, and you are going to uh, give birth of new students in the pharma world for the new uh, for the strengthening of indian uh, pharma industry in future so uh, i will just brief what is the expectation in pharma industry what we teach to the students and how a student can grab all the information from uh, theoretically as well as practically so uh, just i will show i will uh, share my screen before we proceed yeah my screen is visible sir not yet sir I think there is some issue in sharing the file. Let it be. I think we can continue the way I want to be explained. First of all, what is meant by physicochemical properties? Any physicochemical properties means it is just interaction with the different media, interaction of a substance with different media and its molecular properties with a definite intrinsic property, definite interesting chemical reactivity. This is in general definition of the physiochemical properties. But there are various physiochemical properties. It starts from the description of the compound, solubility of the compound, pH, then pH dependent saturated solubility, Dissociation constant, partition coefficient, hygroscopicity, melting point, then polymorphism, stereochemistry of the compound, moisture content or water content of the compound, chirality by uh, chemical purity, HPLC, GC, LCMS. GCMS, MSMS, then bulk density, tap density, then specific optical rotation, particle size, assay by tritometry, and there are various other uh, like compressibility, flowability, then refractive index, 
then boiling point so every property is is a unique with respect to that compound what i said earlier there are two two different uh, types in the pharma industry parts in the pharma industry first is a active substance active substance means the moiety which is actively act on the disease where it will react or where it will give the reaction and give the appropriate result as expected and second part is a drug product that means it is a delivery system of the drug to the patient so drug substance synthesis is a purely chemistry via sorry hello i think uh, hello, i think i was dis i i was discrepant for a short time i i think yes yes sir you yeah yes yeah. okay. no, i reconnect sorry sorry for the disturbance so what i i will ch check i think one second i have got the option to share let me check if it is possible is it possible to share Is it visible? No. Yes, sir. It is presented, but uh, slide is not visible. Is it visible? Yes, yes, no? yes, 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 sir. Visible? It is visible. Yes, visible. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So, first topic. Uh, before I proceed, what I disc, what I, what I just want to strengthen more the part. that there is a basic difference between drug substance or active substance versus the drug product so drug drug substance is a chemical purely chemistry what we learn from the 12th standard till the post graduate mms uh, msc and post doctorate whatever reactions we do uh, and we study it is just outcome of those reactions but drug product is a complete art there is no nothing uh, chemistry is involved <clears throat> it is a complete art that means we have to make the tablet or capsules the way it is available by the innovator or uh, we have to make the same copy paste of uh, that drug product and then we can deliver there are several studies are also done on the drug product so uh, i have just given some brief so what is description <clears throat> what i said earlier description is just simple visual inspection of the drugs or any substance there are various terms being used for the solid drug substance solid substance in terms of description that is white crystalline powder or white amorphous powder white crystalline powder slightly hygroscopic black gray crystalline powder or there are different like like white to of white white to gray white to pale yellow and for uh, liquid compounds we use the term miscible instead of soluble yeah, sorry uh, for liquid there is a uh, colorless compound or yellow viscous compound likewise 
but i just uh, what is the significance of description description looks looks to be a very simple term because by visually we can visual uh, see that yes this is a benzoic acid if it is a uh, white color compound we can Im immediately can can confirm yes this is one of the, suppose this is a benzoic acid and it has a description of white color so suppose uh, what i want to convey message uh, that uh, what is significance of description suppose the the color of benzoic acid appears to be a yellowish or brown or something gray what it indicates that indicates this is not his property because what i said earlier any physicochemical property is an intrinsic property of the compound which gives that the pro, the purity of that compound which confirms yes this is the compound the way which we usually uh, use in our routine life also yes by looking the by visually inspecting anything yes this uh, pot is clean or unclean how we visually examine if it is a clean by visually it, it confirms it can be used for the preparation of our cooking for any other item similar way in pharma industry the first test we use for physical chemical is a description which is a visual inspection suppose this is just what i give example benzoic acid is a white compound but i i see the color of benzoic acid as a gray 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 crystalline powder so i need not to do any test for that compound because visually i can say that this compound is having something which is not his property so something being introduced in that compound or mixed in this compound or maybe generated by a degradation of this compound which that is the reason i will not perform any test of this compound and immediately stop any analysis and confirm this is not the compound which i want to use that will save huge time of the analyst to analyze all the tests because there are huge testing for the simple compounds as well unless we confirm all the clarity all the purity of the compound whatever our expected limits and specification we are not allowed to use any, in any of the manufacturing drug product drug substance so this is the significance of this test to save the time and to confirm yes this is this is the first primary tentative test then second test we perform solubility solubility is having a huge uh, importance in the pharma industry because solubility is just uh, by definition a given substance dissolved in the solvent and how much uh, solvent is required to dissolve this compound that gives you the solubility but usually if uh, i when i was in msc i never bother about these parts okay how much solvent is needed to dissolve this compound because we usually use whatever the amount of solvent used if it is dissolved fine but in terms of pharma industry there are various terms being used for the solubility this what i have shown in my slide that first is very soluble second is a freely soluble third is a soluble only fourth is a sparingly soluble fifth is a slightly soluble six very slightly soluble and last is a practically insoluble or we can just say insoluble so what it gives to what what is the significance of this solubility that is when we can say that compound is very soluble when the amount of solvent suppose 1 gram of uh, substance i have taken and then i start
uh, because of some network problems, sir will join in two minutes. Uh, sir, we'll join in two minutes. Just wait.
ओके सर सर हैज जॉइन हेलो हाय यस सर यस ओके या सॉरी सॉरी फॉर द नेटवर्क इशू नो प्रॉब्लम सर uh is it is it visible yes sir yes sir yes sir visible na yes sir yes sir okay, visible thank you that uh, move so uh i think uh, i'm not aware where we are but i will just brief once so libid is having a very good role in the uh, development of drug product and to synthesize any drug substance i have i have mentioned i have explained the what is mean by solubility how solubility is encountered or determined for any substance for determination of solubility and when this we have the solubility then this will give you idea about during my manufacturing process which solvent i can use by what quantity by what which quant how much amount of quantity is sufficient to remove unwanted inorganic or organic impurities or solvents from my process then what solvent i can use as a crystallization solvent of this active substance so this is something the which this is something the information which is useful in terms of synthesize of any active substance in the best manner with a very pure with accurate manner and with uh, economics user friendly and we can get more pure compound then it good use in the pharma industry in terms of drug product development develop drug substance it is in a powder form or liquid form that powder or liquid is a active part of any tablet or capsule or injection that goes into the drug product development part then whenever we want to make any tablet or capsule or even injection injectable uh, powder or injection or powder for solution whatever at that time if we know what is the uh, solubility of my compound then i can uh, take x gram of that compound and x ml of that solvent so that it will appropriately adsorb or absorb to my excipient and i can develop a good drug product so these are some importance of the solubility now there is, there is one more term more property which we usually do for the, the drug substance when once it is manufactured or even for the starting materials or intermediates which fermenters is manufacturing or the sub raw materials which we procure from the outside party vendor or outside company hygroscopy plays a major role uh, in terms of uh, to understand if the material is hygroscopic slightly hygroscopic or very hygroscopic then this will determine where and how i can store this product if material is a non hygroscopic we can store at 25 degree room temperature without much more precautions but if the compound is a very uh, slightly hygroscopic or hygroscopic or very hygroscopic then we need to design the appropriate packaging of that product so that to avoid ingress of moisture in the compound so what is the, this is the property of hygroscopicity so what is hygroscopicity it is a phenomenon 
of holding water molecules either by absorption or, abs or adsorption from the environment or surrounding. And this, this phenomenon usually occurs at the room temperature because majority we have just made a one, one minute. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, can we have just a two minute break because uh, there here one more meeting is going on. I just need to shift another place. Can you allow me just two minutes? Sure, sir. Yeah, okay. We will continue from this here. Just give me two, three minutes so that I can uh, shift in another meeting. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Hello? Hello, sir. Yeah. 
uh, I join the IT. Thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Thank you. Okay. So we are on the hygroscopy of the compound. So hygroscopic compound. What I said, hygroscopicity gives you the idea where any substance can be stored. Either you manufacture at your own site or you purchase from the outside. So it, it's a very simple technique to identify whether the compound is hygroscopic. Hygroscopic is having also a four definitions. One is a delicus delicstan. That means this is the once the compound exposes in the atmosphere, it will become water. That means a very, very hygroscopic. Second property is a very hygroscopic, where the increasing mass, uh, first before that I will just say what is the procedure. Then you will understand what is meant by hygroscopicity. And third property is hygroscopic and last is a slight hygroscopic. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, non hygroscopic So, hygroscopicity we have to do uh, take a sample, keep in uh, desiccator along with the saturated, saturated solution of ammonium sulfate because saturated ammonium sulfate will give you the humidity about 80 percent. Keep the compound in desiccator along with saturated ammonium sulfate about 24 hours then before putting the sample with the empty vessel or petri dish then wait this vessel along with sample and one after 24 hours weigh the sample this is very simple technique we need only petri dish desiccator and analytical balance and the sample so uh, this is the formula to calculate increase in mass that is m3 minus m2 m3 here is that uh, after 24 hours weight and m2 is the uh, vessel along with sample weight before put into the desiccator if you calculate this you will get some figure and that figure we need to fit into the data interpretation and what data first data interpretation that if it is liquid at all then uh, there is no any criteria. It is a deliction. If increase in mass is greater than 50 or equal or greater than 15 percent, then it is called as a very hygroscopic. If increasing mass means this value is less than 15 percent or equal to greater than 2 percent, that means 2 to 15 percent will be hygroscopic and between uh, less than 2 percent to uh, 0.2 percent this is slightly hygroscopic and if it is below 0.2 percent it is non hygroscopic so this is the, uh, the humidity index how how it will be established by using various compound just like by using potassium sulfate at 25 degrees celsius it will give about 97 percent of humidity why we use ammonium sulfate because at 25 degrees celsius it gives 80 percent humidity to the uh, substance so what i said earlier <clears throat> hygroscopicity will give you idea about where product to be stored and how it will be stored then there are uh, solubility once again solubility is having another uh, what we see earlier solubility in terms of solvent now in terms of pH dependent sol saturated solubility. So first of all, what does it mean by saturated solubility? And then pH dependent means by various pH. Now why the first let us understand okay, why what is the significance of those pH wherein we are checking the solubility of the compound and what it will give. First of all, what are the factors why these particular media is being selected we will understand that and then what is the rational of various solubilities so first solubility will take a compound at a saturated level in water make it up to saturation just like sodium chloride add sodium chloride in water 
up to that level it becomes saturated mean if you add few more it will becomes crystalline again it will start it crystallization that is called the solubility milligrams per ml that is called saturated solubility of the substance now every study what we will do will do at pH th at 37 degrees celsius why all the solubilities is being tested at 37 degrees celsius the reason behind it that everything whatever we produce or we uh, manufacture as a drug product these all are being provided to the patient human being patient and our body temperature is about 37 degrees celsius so whatever study we will do for this all design that will be on 37 degrees celsius so we'll check water solubility at 37 degree what will normally SCL solubility at 37 degree or various pH buffers now there are uh, acetate buffer whose pH is 4 acid buffer which pH is 4.5 then there are phosphate buffers that is 6.8 pH buffer 7.4 pH buffer and all these buffer solutions you all know okay, how to prepare 0.1 normal HCl how to prepare uh, 0.1 normal NOH or how to prepare different buffers and measure the pH whether this is appropriate or not then once uh, and this why water is selected, why SCL is selected, and why acid buffer and phosphate buffers are selected to test the solubility. So to test the solubility, why? because in our body, uh, uh, all these buffers are available. Just like water is in, available in human body. Excess amount of point one normal SCL is available in the human body. That is the reason we majority of the people face has acidity problem then we have our acid buffer at 4 and 4.5 pH we have also phosphate buffers at 6.8 and 7.4 pH because of that we, pay, we, we have faced the patient issues who is having a kidney stone line and that is because of the huge deposition of the calcium via different different gel foods so once this these these solubility factors are available what we will do once we have the solubility i have given one example of the compound wherein the solubility in water is zero that means it is practically insoluble in point one normally it will be 3.37 milligram per ml that is slightly soluble in point one normally SL, it is 40.61 milligram per ml soluble and in acetate buffer uh, 4 and 4.5, 0.53 means very slightly soluble. If, if you see from the table, so whole that product or whole that compound is soluble in the point one normal AC. So whenever you prepare any drug product to deliver in the uh, patient, you need to design the dissolution of this particular API or particular drug product in the media of 0.1 normal SCL because before we give any tablets to the patient it is being tested in laboratory by making 0.1 normal SCL media wherein the tablet is being inserted and after every hour its dissolution is being checked that means how the tablet is travel in the body of human is being tested offline via apparatus there are various apparatus two three apparatus usp recommended being used to check whether this tablet is appropriately goes and disintegrate at the target so that it will give the appropriate results and how to select the media this is the way to select the media that means for this particular formulation point on normal scl will be resolution media Similar way, there are different drugs wherein the solute is in water, solute in phosphate buffer or acid buffer. That media can be used to deliver the product to the patient. And if we make, uh, if suppose we do dissolution in water, it will not achieve any dissolution. That means if we made the product or if, if you do uh, the study on the water, it will not give any result. So we need to check how much amount of 
product is being dissolved per minute and per minute what is the reaction on the various patients now we you all know uh, what is mean by the partition coefficient or distribution coefficient so it is just uh, dist uh, partition it is the phase between two uh, aqueous and non aqueous media is called as a partition coefficient of the compound where in uh, generally for to determine the partition coefficient uh, we use one that is called the hydrophobic solvent and we use just generally at a one actinum uh, to determine the to confirm what is the partition coefficient of that particular drug substance in uh, during our uh, up to
Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hi, yes, sir. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I think it is because uh, our I am in right now office and our internal network is not uh, allowing me to present. That is the reason it is disconnected too many times because it is just we are talking just outside the company. If it is at my home today, then it will be working okay. okay. That is the reason it was disconnected too many times. But I am just on the last page, uh, our last discussion. Just I will take your only five minutes. So what we are discussing that uh, I will not go in detail for that single crystal and everything. And there are, uh, we are just discussing the properties, but let us forget about the property. There are various properties. And if I need to uh, talk on very, each property for a day, uh, if one property requires about one hour to explain appropriately. But what is actually my expectation or what is the industry's expectation from each student? Because we have seen only text, text marks are not important. Well, because I realize, I, I know, although student is having 99% marks, it will just qualify for any interview. It will give a entry. It will open the door for any industry or any organization or anywhere. But the important thing is that finally it was how much your practical hand is. If your practical hand or, or your application hand, we can say, is not the way we want, then that 99% marks will not work in at anywhere. So whenever you as a teacher are going to deliver any practical, any theoretical, any theory, just uh, inform them seriousness of the practical seriousness of any theory because unless we know the theory we cannot do practical for example if i say uh, we have a normality determination practical just like i said with titration to confirm the more normality of any uh, solvent any uh, noh or scl what usually students are doing during the practical because i am also one of the time the student so i know they directly drop the everything from the drop uh, unit and then when there will be color change they feel very good in terms of uh, yes there is a color change just like, just like pink color appears or pink to colorless i don't want that that is okay that they are playing with that game they are playing just like game instead of that practical what is the significance of that molarity or normality if I determine the normality of point one normal SL, if I make and I need to check whether this is correct or wrong. If I made a mistake in that point one normal normality, then understand how much huge impact in the industry which we develop as a drug, if I incorrectly measure that normality, then this testing will go subsequently from step one till the final effect, till the drug product. And once it is the once the final product is manufactured, it will be defected. And in industry, there is no excuses for the mistakes. So to avoid mistakes, I sincerely request key, please have a, a sincerity in terms of all the students, the way we want the practicals hand, and what is the importance of those hands. Because if 55% student is having a good practical ability, he will go faster than the 99% capability student if he do not have the practical capability. If he do not understand what is the importance of that practical, what is the rationale behind the practical? Because to, uh, to make the derivative is not our purpose. Our purpose is to make derivative what precautions, what how it can be added, just like for dilutation reaction, what reaction condition, if I cannot maintain at zero degree Celsius, then it cannot be formed. I mean sometimes we do not get in derivatives. That is the reason because 
we do not follow that zero degree Celsius condition. We may get some product. So uh, this is just my suggestion. Now uh, I think uh, if you have any question, we can discuss. Or uh, once again, I will thank for giving me an opportunity. And sorry for the disturbance in between. Uh, if you have any question, we can discuss. Thank you all. Thank you for your the patience. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, go Hello. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, how to include increase the physicochemical property like uh, metabolic properties, admit properties? We can say that absorption, distribution, metabolism, mm -hmm. and excretion of the drugs. Okay. How to increase? Because uh, one of the drug which is having lesser solubility, then the absorption get decreased. So in that case, Correct. what we have to do to increase the absorption of that particular drug? See, uh, in the uh, what I said, uh, we have different pH, different buffers, and first, first universal solvent is water. If it is not soluble in water, that means this substance will not be soluble for the polar compounds. You have to check with the non-polar. If it is also insoluble in various non-polar, go for the different phosphate compounds wherein the solubility will be there. So by making the, by use of different phosphates or by using, using different non-polar solvents, you can increase the solubility. Sir, uh, is there any role of C log P over there? What are what, what what you say? Sorry. Uh, C, C log P values. C log P. Calculated log P values. Yeah, yeah. Log P value. Yes, yes, yes. That is that is what log P value uh, is having a major role in terms of uh, because it is just the hydrate ions present in the uh, substance in the form of H plus. Correct. So this the, the major role of log P uh, is to develop an analytical method because if uh, if you say to develop a related compound method or uh, related substances by GC various uh, techniques are being used so so to solve that compound we we it is useful technique to develop uh, for the development of analytical methods because we need to uh, what I said earlier also okay. What, whatever compound we made, by theoretically it is possible by X, Y, Z reaction that this is the reaction it will give this product. But how to confirm that my compound is how much pure or what is the whether uh, S Y whether I have prepared appropriately perfect R isomer or yes isomer or the it is a chiral, it is a racemic mixture of compound. So for all this development of analytical work, this uh, log p value will work. Okay. Sir, one more question uh, regarding Lipinski rule. Uh, most of the times, uh, everybody is uh, Lipinski rule, rule of five. Okay. Huh, huh. Huh. So, uh, most of the uh, pharmaceutical companies or drug discovery lies companies following that uh, Lipinski rule because molecular weight should not be more than 500 and uh, the uh, polarity or hydrogen bond acceptor and donor and uh, C log p value should be less than 5 or like that. So, uh, yes. is it really worth to have such a Lipinski rule applicable everywhere? No, because uh, why Why this is being uh, this is being said, if you see uh, there are several complex compounds uh, in terms of if I said ion sucrose, ion sucrose looks to be a uh, very simple molecule. But it is a complex in terms of it forms uh, conjugation of the iron. So when we uh, we are going to synthesize all the uh, all these drugs, so I think there is some noise. Let it be. So when we are we synthesize all these drugs and when we want to make a drug product, at that time 
uh, the FDA or any governmental agency is having an expectation to prove the sameness of compound. That means, uh, because I have not explained this sameness because this is very a uh, huge and huge topic. Yeah, but it's a good, good question from your side. Thank you for that. And to prove the sameness, what is the expected? What I said earlier, that drug product is an art, but drug substance is a chemistry. So to make it that art, if we have more than 500 Ipsy the value, then it is very difficult to bind all these complex molecules together. And if although we will try to bind, we are also manufacturing what you said correctly. In some molecules it is being asked, but in some molecules there is no option. So wherever we are going to manufacture, then we need to prove the sameness of that compound. And to prove the sameness of compound, it is a huge amount of investment from the industry because it has to be compared with the R&D with respect to all the parameters. Just like, uh, I don't know whether uh, uh, peptides, you, you might have heard the peptides is an amino acid chain molecules. So in amino acid chain molecule, there's a disulfide bridging with respect to, by two sulfide groups of the amino acids. So agency's expectation is that to confirm whether this disulfide bond is formed appropriately at the position where you are written. So to confirm all these conjugations and sameness, it took uh, very hard efforts and to save that effort, that, the, that, is, that is the reason they said, ki, yes, you, you should develop in the way industry want. But if there is no rational, if there is no other choice, of course, we have to go for that. Thank you. Very good question, sir. Sir, one more question. Go ahead. Go ahead. No problem. I have very okay. much time. I just have bother about your time. <laughs> Okay, sir. Uh, one question is uh, plasma protein binding. Hmm. Plasma hmm. protein binding, because uh, the uh, T half value of the particular drug that depends on the plasma protein binding, isn't it? Agreed. So, uh, so the drug which is having more than ninety nine point five percent plasma protein binding, so it is really having a T half value is less or more. That is, that is my question. No, whose, whose protein binding capacity is more than 19.5%, it's T half value, of, of, of course it will meet. Okay. But uh, majority, but what, what will be the expectation for uh, agency? Because, see, uh, there are a third role in the pharma industry. That is, first is to manufacture drug substance, second is to manufacture drug product. This is first chain drug product is manufactured. Now, it is not just like India to sell tomatoes on the road. The way we cannot sell any drug product in uh, any other outside the world. So whenever you want to provide your drug, uh, to launch your drug, to sell your drug in the US or any other region, there are FDA laws. So we need to register that product to the uh, that country. Then FDA's expectation is that whatever that 0.5% missing part, binding capacity, which we call it as a binding capacity of that particular molecule, they will ask the binding capacity of that remaining 0.5% in terms of adverse impact. Hmm. You, you got it? So that is called the biological assay of that impurity that we, 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 we for sake of information, will say Impurity, what is the 0.5% remaining? That is hindrance to the binding to the protein. So that is bioassay for that. There is a huge study again, because we need to then again do the dissolution, do again the minimum 20 patient study for the 20 patient to confirm that this 0.5% doesn't have any biology at the time of drug dispersion. I hope I hope I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yes, sir. I got it. But okay. again, uh, what one more question is arised in front of me. Go ahead, please. Uh, so that the uh, triple B, that is a brain blood brain barrier, mm -hmm. that is also playing important role in a CNS type of drugs. Correct. 
सर कैन यू इलेबोरेट लिटिल बिट ऑन दिस सी सी एन एस ड्रग मोस्टली इफ यू सी दीज आर मोस्टली पेप्टाइड एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स एंटी कैंसर मोलिक्यूल्स ऑल्सो प्लेज एंड वेन एवर वेन एवर वी वी वॉन्ट टू सिंथेसाइज ऑल दिस प्रोडक्ट which is having the impact over the central nervous system of any any patient or uh, suppose who is having the, the uh, issue of central nervous system so when we want to synthesize this drug we need to have a isolated facility because when uh, for example uh, if you use methylene dichloride by naked hand then it will absorb via skin into your body and that will be a cancerous that is a very huge skin irritation will be there in similar way whenever the cns drug is being manufactured it has to be manufactured in the isolated facility because if you expose any uh, worker with the uh, powder processing or once the drug is formed or during the manufacturing drug then that drug will absorb fats of from the body and that will penetrate into the human body and uh, unless there is a drug delivery system the way drug product or drug substances like tablet capsules injections or sprays or some gels unless we deliver from that system that will not go into appropriately into the body and act at appropriate place but if at the time of manufacturing if directly drug insert into the body it will having the impact on your brain and to save the employee from all these functions there is a appropriate precautions based on the category of the drug so what you said cns drugs are very complex and very sensitive in terms of absorption from in the body so we have some very good uh, governing procedure for to handle such a drugs okay sir thank you sir thank you sir yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you good anyone has having any question i think go ahead no problem no sir uh, thank you very much sir for such a informative talk now i request to mr p v b c sir to conclude all sessions over to you sir good afternoon to all uh, department of chemistry has organized faculty development program for the bsc part first msc part first a diploma and advanced diploma as a part of that yesterday we have organized the fdp program on the syllabus of bsc part first and today we have organized the faculty development program on diploma and advanced diploma syllabus and as a part of that we have kept two session on diploma syllabus and two session on advanced diploma syllabus so the first session is uh, given by the uh, mr sagar deshpande and he has given a very good information regarding the addition of the syllabus addition of the practical addition in the syllabus which will be helpful in order to rearrange the syllabus of the skill course which we have uh, taken for the bsc part first that is processing and packaging of the household product sir has given very nice information regarding the branding and regarding the label of the product which we have prepared in the laboratory and uh, for the marketing of that uh, product he has also given a nice information the second uh, session is on uh, is given by dr sr patil uh, which is from the sirpur college and uh, he has given the information regarding the syllabus uh, which we have kept as a advanced diploma named synthesis and processing of the dyes and in that he has given a very nice information regarding the classification of dyes based on their chemical constitution and on depending on the chemical constitution how the dyes are classified and how it is to be given to the students the very good information is given by dr sr patil 
and definitely i will be uh, sure that this information which he has given we will implement that information in the restructuring of the syllabus for the advanced diploma and the last session of the fdp program is given by mr ashok ravlekar on physico chemical analysis particularly pharmaceutical analysis the three sessions which we have organized today have are very fruitful for rearranging the syllabus for giving the information to the students regarding the syllabus so i am i am very happy that the fdp program on a diploma and advanced diploma which we have organized is a fruitful program it will be helpful to us and even to the students uh, so i am i am very much thankful for the three resource person which have given a very nice lectures in diploma and advanced diploma fdp program thank you thank you very much over to ma'am thank you very much sir now i request to gaikwad sir to express vote of thanks thank you madam i am here to deliver a vote of thanks firstly i am very much thankful to the last speaker that is a uh, uh, revan lekar sir for delivering very informative to the faculty that is the various uh, test that is required for that of the <laughs> industry <laughs> but we are also doing that test but it is not in that way to it is uh, very important to that of the pharmaceutical industries thank you sir and it is also the solubility and hydroisotopic method that is our very uh, uh we can say it is a very only as a test for our, our practical but it is very important to that of the pharmaceutical industries okay uh, thank you very much sir on the behalf of uh, department of chemistry also thank to the uh, second speaker that is the sagar patil yes sir patil sir dr yes sir patil sir for the informative uh, lecture on that of the natural and synthetic dyes i also thanks to first session speaker that is mr sagar deshpande sir from ultron chemicals he deliver a very wonderful lecture on that of the processing and packaging of household product for the new product that is the car wash and number of uh, chemicals that is uh, having a demand in day to day life that uh, speak and also very much thankful for the uh, anchor dr sp wagmaya madam and also thanks to uh, coordinator that is advanced diploma and diploma coordinator dr g d kokate sir i sincerely express my thank to bio chairman dr b b sawant madam for uh, supporting and guidance to that of the fdp program i also thanks to the head of the department of chemistry mr p v b s sir and lastly i sincerely thanks to principal dr b t jadhav sir for continuous support thank you with the permission of head of the department i declare that today's all session is over